Welcome back. All right, going through more USDA report, kind of this data dump that we had Thursday. Looking at quarterly grain stocks, what was the biggest surprise for you, Matt? Yeah, I mean, it was corn, actually. So obviously, we talk about corn having a friendly report on acreage, but that's not where all the friendly uh, numbers came in. Uh, the average trade guests on uh, on stocks were actually 80 million above, 80 million bushels above uh, where they came in at for quarterly stocks. So that tells you uh, disappearance for corn has been pretty strong. We do know ethanol margins been running good. Uh, most weeks we've been running ahead of the pace that we would need to meet, meet the USDA goal, uh, which tells me that uh, you could see some adjustments there. And so uh, there's no doubt that uh, disappearance was better than what the average trade uh, uh, average trader thought that it would be. And so I, I would call the stocks number a little bit friendly on corn as well. All right, so a friendlier number with corn when it came to stocks, a friendlier number when it came to acreage. Now that we have these reports, Joe, what is the market focused on? Um, I guess we're gonna move toward, uh, we'll continue to focus on demand, planting conditions, maybe uh, weather as it relates to the second corn crop in Brazil, and what sort of changes you see to these acreage numbers in June. Um, the U.S. growing season, as it relates to corn in particular, it's the biggest deal on the planet by a wide margin. So, you know, you can talk about the balance sheets and all that stuff all you want, but you run into a weather issue and everything changes. We saw it last year. It may only last for two weeks, but that's going to be the big thing here for the next uh, three or four months. Yeah, Matt, when I go out and I talk to a lot of farmers right now, I mean, a lot of them are concerned about grain prices, uh, but weather is a big concern. We know it is dry in some of these places, not a lot of subsoil moisture, but it seems like that's pretty well advertised, Matt. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's uh, certainly a story that we all know. And if you ask your average uh, uh, grower, hey, what do you want to see for a spring? At this stage of the game, the last thing they want to see is subsoil moisture getting replenished, which means you're going to run into a wet spring. So, uh, you know, I've got to think that as far as weather's concerned, um, it's something to keep in the back of your head. You want to have some reserves. You want to have some subsoil moisture. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think, uh, I just think it's way too early in the game uh, to get too awful worried about that uh, personally. And so moving forward, I think uh, it'll be a thing that we could trade. Uh, but I think that you're going to have to get uh, closer to pollination before people are going to be uh, too awful worried about it. Well, Joe, we saw the big weather story last year. I mean, how big of a story drought was and still the record corn crop that we had. But with the fund positions this year, do you think the market will be more sensitive or less sensitive? No, dry weather dry weather's bearish until the third week in May. In 2012, dry weather was bearish until the third week in June. Um, the trade's going to look at, at the dry weather and say, you know, plant in the dust and the bins will bust. I mean, that's that's what traders are going to think. That's how they've handled drought historically. Historically, they don't get worried about this until late May or, or even in late in, into late June in the case of 2012. So I would argue if if anything, it might be a, a non-issue to a bearish issue uh, for the next call it two months. All right, Matt, when it came to the acreage report, grain stocks, you know, we're in March madness right now with basketball. There wasn't a lot of madness. Didn't see a lot of complaints. However, when it came to the cattle on feed report, there were some issues, some analysts concerned about why those placements were up so much. What is the biggest question mark right now when it comes to cattle? Placements were up. Uh, you, whenever you look at what happened for Febu in February, January numbers, actually, uh, those numbers were a little bit higher than what the trade was actually expecting. And so we had to we had to think that you come in here to these numbers and, you know, uh, bottom line is you had like 92, 93 for February. OK, some people thought it could be even lower yet, but you knew a lot of these cattle got pulled forward. So a 105, 106 isn't exactly shocking. I think that uh, part of what was going on this week, you know, is that, uh, you know, obviously the flu situation uh, definitely concerning for the market and I just think that we've been overcooked for long enough that uh, uh, you just ran out of buyers and so uh, this market certainly looks susceptible especially with a monthly reversal which certainly is on the table as we talk uh, with that being the case I would expect you could see some weakness in this cattle market uh, moving forward all right we need to take a quick break and then we'll have much more right here